This is Hannah Cotterill here on the Hudson River in New York City for the AC World Series uh, with Steve Colgate, uh, founder of the Offshore Sailing School here in, the, in New York. Uh, Steve, this is quite an exciting day for New York City. Uh, the, the race hasn't been back here since 1920, so very exciting. Absolutely. It's going to be a, today is a little light, so it won't be too exciting today. Tomorrow is supposed to be very windy, yeah. and that would be great, you know. With these uh, catamarans, they'll go up 30, 40 miles an hour. Yeah, exhilarating so, racing. Yeah. And ver very, uh, very still out here today. It is. Mm -hmm. Good for photography. Good, good for Good for interviews. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you actually yourself did some AC trials back in the uh, 60s and 70s. Could you potentially uh, give us an idea of what the guys will be thinking out there today? They'll be nervous. And uh, until they get into the race, and then you just forget about your nervousness, you know. But uh, uh, then, then their their professionalism will take over. Back when I did it, it was all amateurs. Okay. I was in 1967. I was on American Eagle. I was a four deck crew, uh, and uh, and set the spinnaker and the spinnaker pole and jibe the pole and stuff like that. Uh, in 1970, I was on Heritage, and I had graduated to the cockpit and and a tactician, so uh, uh, that was an upgrade. In neither case did we get in, we didn't win the trials, but it was a great experience. Yeah, I'm actually very, I'm fascinated by the fact that you've done so many different roles uh, on, a, on a boat. You did uh, helmsman, tactician, uh, fore deck, and, and it must have taught you quite a lot about how these guys actually operate on the boats and, and what goes into making the team function. It, uh, it did. Uh, certainly, uh, as you get older and get more experienced, obviously part of it is just a, a process of, of knowing more and yeah. uh, getting more responsibility and moving up into the, you know, in, into the management area mm -hmm. of things. So um, the, these guys, are, uh, it's just amazing that they can sail these. So five men are going to sail these boats, five or six. I, don't, I think it's five. Uh, they're 45 footers. They are. Their heart rate is going to be at just about max for the whole race. It's uh, there's very few uh, sports where you're you know, like a long distance running. You're not a h maximum heart rate for the for 20 minutes. Yeah. You know, and this is this is th just about there. So these guys are in terrific condition. They're professionals. They are the best of the world. Uh, and they get paid for it too. Yeah, paid to do uh, what you love. Yeah, right. Well, I, I got room and board, <laughs> so that was, that was fine for me, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'll, I also, I know you know this river very well. Uh, you, you grew up around here, and, and so, from your perspective, obviously this is a very tidal river. Uh, how, how much is that going to come into play today? Well, it'll come into play quite a lot, actually. These, these boats, if they go against the current. They increase the apparent wind, and it makes them go faster. Right. So quite often, you know, in, in most areas, you don't want to go against the current. You, in a sailboat, you go with the current as right, much yeah. as possible, or you get out of the current if it's against you. But they won't. Uh, well, they won't be doing that. So it's a, it's, it's a di di very different type of sailing yeah. from what I'm used to, and you know. Yeah, it must make for a much more tactical race when it, when you have to take into account the tide so much. Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. And obviously from your sailing perspective and, and racing yourself, um, you did your first big race at the age of 19. Um, right. So that must have been incredible. And obviously you've done, gone on to do multiple transatlantic races in Newport, Bermuda, Antigua, Race Week. The, the list really goes on. What is it about offshore sailing that, that just gave you that buzz? You know, I, I don't really know. <laughs> That's a great answer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I know that I just got turned on to it uh, at the age of 19. As you said, I did a, a race from uh, Havana, Cuba to San Sebastian, Spain. And I was at a party up in Connecticut, and my mother had been golfing with a, a friend. And uh, the friend wa had, um, was a relative of the world star class champion, and he was on a 72-foot uh, boat, and he was, had the English-speaking watch. And the owner of the boat, Enrique Arrucha, had the Spanish-speaking watch. He was a Spanish millionaire. And uh, so Woody was trying to get a crew together for his watch. And his um, relative 
with my mother said, do you think, uh, my mother said, do you think Steve, he'd like to have Steve aboard? And, um, and they said, well, when we get off the links, we'll give him a call down in Miami. And he said, sure, you know, he wanted to, he d I didn't, I'd never been on a boat that large. I'd never slept on a boat overnight. Uh, and, uh, and asked, uh, they called up and he said, sure, come along. And so my parents said, get back here. Uh, we have to get you a passport. This was Sunday. We have to get you a passport by tomorrow. By Wednesday, you have to be down in Havana, Cuba, and by Saturday, you're on oh the my race. Goodness, I didn't even know that was possible to get yeah. a passport that quickly. Well, I can, you can if you. <laughs> Where contacts. there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> so that, that was. Ex and I hadn't been back to Cuba until a couple of years ago and saw where I left, and it changed my life. You know, it really. Where it all began. Where it all began. And we got over to San Sebastian, Spain, and. Um, uh, Generalissimo uh, Francisco Franco in invited us aboard uh, his yacht, uh, who was in the harbor, and he was the dictator of Spain at that point, you know. And uh, it was it was quite exciting to that. Then the uh, owner of the boat asked, "Would I like to come up to uh, to uh, cruise up to England and do the f seventy uh, the 50 1955 Fastnet race?" And so I said, "Sure." So you just it all just sort of seems to spiral into no, one after on the on. other. Yeah, it went on and and on, yeah. obviously, moving on to this offshore sailing school that, that you now have founded um, and is doing very, very well, can you tell us a bit about why you went down that path? Well, uh, I just happened to be in a cocktail party with a, <laughs> with a, and, a and I started talking to a fellow who had a cruising boat, and he said, Have you ever thought about starting a sailing school? You got the experience, <laughs> you got the education, you're able to, you know. Uh, you, you, I have a, a cruising boat, and we could get together as partners and do it. So we started offshore sailing school in 1964, and uh, and then a year later he said, "I'm divorcing my wife. Uh, if you pay my wife what we owe her, I didn't know we owed her wife anything, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we agreed. I agreed to do it, and it was $3,600, and I paid $100 a month for three years, wow. and uh, got that off and owned the." Owned it outright. Owned it off the ground. Yeah, right. So all, all big decisions start with a cocktail bar. Oh, that's absolutely Very amazing good. what There's can happen. There's an important lesson there. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Have a few drinks and then make a decision. <laughs> exactly. And yeah. uh, Don't hesitate. What, what is the ethos of the school as well? Is it about getting people into offshore racing uh, or just sailing? Uh, it, it, you know, offshore is just the name. It's really getting beginners into sailing and getting yeah. them and doing it right and learning them, uh, teaching them the proper way. Uh, and not just how to do something, but why you're doing it, and the background of sailing. And uh, we've we've always had a you know a classroom um, before the sailing. We sent we wrote our own textbooks. We have our own sailboat, you know. Yeah, as we can and see. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it's not just about um, getting people on boats; it's getting them on and teaching them to be competent sailors. Absolutely, do it the right way first, and then they'll enjoy it. But if you get uh, if you go out and you don't know what you're doing uh, and you panic, mm. uh, you'll be turned off from sailing. Yeah, that first experience is so important. It either makes it or breaks it for a lot of people. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Well, um, Steve, it's been a pleasure catching up with you today. And I know the uh, America's Cup is, is about to start uh, in an hour from now. So uh, we'll get back to watching it over here. And thank you for catching up with us. And I'm sure we will catch up with you later. Thank you, thank you so much, Hannah, for doing this. Thank you. Cool.